Hey folks, welcome to Weiss Advice Powered by BeatStars.com. This video is going to be on world building, how we can use reverb to create an entire universe for our song to live in. Before I get started, I want to give a special shout out to Placebo Beats for supplying the record that's going to allow me to demonstrate these ideas. And before we get into it, if you haven't seen the Reverb Primer and the EQ Primer, you might want to check those out because some of those ideas are going to be carrying right over. Okay, so what do I mean by world building? Well, all of our records are going to want to have a universe, a world that the listener gets pulled into and becomes engulfed by. And different records are going to demand different universes. Certain styles like acoustic rock or jazz might want a very realistic world, something that sounds like it's being performed in the room with you. Or certain styles of music, things like cinematic trailer music or certain styles of EDM or certain styles of pop, we might want a more surreal verb that's more about the colors and creating these almost unrealistic front-to-back images. Images, lots of depth, lots of movement. And then for certain styles of music, things that are more groove oriented, maybe we want everything to be up front and in your face. Styles like Afrobeat, reggaeton, hip hop. We're going to want to use tighter reverbs, move more of the sounds forward, and get something that's right there and very dancey and groovy. All right, so. What I want to do is start by playing this record, and before we get into any techniques, we have to acknowledge that the techniques are meaningless if we don't know where we're trying to take things. So we're going to listen to this record and determine, okay, what world is going to work for it. Let's give it a play. All right, so I really like this sort of tighter sound that we're getting in the verse section. I think that we should preserve that. When we get into the chorus, I think it should open up and become more of an epic and expansive sound because the verse is really more groove oriented. And then when we hit the chorus, it switches over to something that's more melodically influenced. So I think it would help bring out that contrast if we went by going from something that was more tight and focused into something that's more expansive and reverby. So that's a general map of what we're going to do. Now, within the actual scope of the verse itself, I think that it would be really cool to use a very tight and colorful reverb to just sort of color up that main bass sound, as well as maybe the claps that are living on the sides. And then for contrast, we could create something on that snare that hits from time to time that's a little bit of a longer, deeper reverb that kind of moves things to the back image of the record, and it's more focused in the center. I think that's going to create some really cool dimension. I think that's going to create some really cool sonic contrast and get some really good textures in there that's going to really take this record from sounding very good into great. And that's really where we're trying to go. So I'm going to play the dry record one more time, and then I'm going to start building these reverbs. Okay, so... In order to do this, I'm going to do something a little different than what I did in the reverb primer. Instead of setting up my reverbs on inserts, I'm going to set them up on send channels, meaning I'm going to take some blank channels and I'm going to label them. I've labeled this one tight verb, and I'm going to send the elements that I want to go there over to it. So this first bass layer, for example, I'm going to send it over to my tight reverb channel. Same thing with this bass. Same thing with these claps. Great. Let's close that down. There we go. So now I've got all of those being sent to this one channel. The reason why I'm doing this is twofold. One is that it allows me to design a reverb that is homogenous across a number of sources. Instead of having to make the same reverb independently on four different sources, I can just do it all on one channel. It makes things easier. It makes for a better workflow. The other thing is that I can now affect the reverb itself without affecting the dry sounds. So if I want to EQ the reverb or contour it in some kind of a way that's different than how the sounds actually sound to begin with, I'll have the availability to do that. 
Okay, so now I have to ask myself, what kind of a reverb do I want? Do I want a convolution or do I want something that's algorithmic? And again, it just depends on how flexible I need to be. I think because this is going to be my more prominent reverb or at least my more influential reverb in this section, I wanna go for something that sounds really, really good and has a very distinct color, which makes me think that maybe a convolution reverb is going to be the better choice. So I'm going to grab the Fruity Convolver and I get a lot of options. I can go over here to my presets and it's gonna give me a whole bunch of different interesting things. And I mean, it's giving us a wide array of choices. We could be here picking choices forever, uh, but I think I'm going to go to something that I feel is going to work right off the bat. I think that a chamber is going to be a good choice. This Lex chamber right here, it's going to be textured. It's going to give us a certain um, quality that is more about personality than about providing depth necessarily. And that's kind of what we're going for here. So one of these chambers is probably gonna be the one that I want. And I'm gonna start with this Lex Chamber Cool and see if this works. Now, because we are on an aux track, this is a little different. We wanna take our dry signal and make sure to turn it all the way down. The only thing that we want on our return is going to be the wet reverb signal. So I'm going to have this up here I'm gonna start pushing up this fader and we're just gonna see if we've picked a good sounding reverb to begin with. It sounds okay. Maybe something a little bit brighter might be good. Let's try something like Lex Chamber Bright 2. I feel like right off the bat, that's giving me something that's a little bit more in line with what I want because I'm looking for something that's a tighter sound and bringing a little bit more color. And I'm just, I'm hearing that more present in this particular preset. I'm gonna try one other preset just to see what we get. Let's go for this uh, Lex Chamber Bright One and see how that feels. Also, very good choice. I think that both of these really work. I'm sort of between the two. They sound very similar. But I'm just gonna go with my instinct and my gut on this, and I'm gonna say that the Bright Chamber 2 feels a little better to me overall, uh, but they're pretty comparable. So I'd say either one is a fine choice. Now, the next thing I need to determine is, is the length of the reverb correct for what I'm trying to do? And I think that it's just a little bit too long, so I'm going to change this impulse by time stretching it and making it a little shorter. I think that's much better. The other thing I want is I want this to live more on the sides and less in the center. So I'm going to take this, which is marked as a, it says wet for some reason, but it's really, it's a, it's a stereo versus mono control. And I'm gonna turn it more toward the stereo side. From there, I'm just going to set the level that I want. So I'm really just adding a little bit of color with this reverb. That's the goal for this. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to contour it a little bit. That lead bass, it's got too much in the low range, and I want to get some of that bass out so that the low range of the bass stays drier and feels closer. So let's grab a parametric EQ. this a little bit brighter. I've taken out some of the low range, added a little bit more of the top end, 
This is going to give a little bit more spark to the clap. It's going to give a little bit more texture to the bass, but it's also going to allow the bass to stay tighter and more forward in the mix. So here's without our EQ. And now if I take the reverb away, we started from this. Kind of lifeless and dead. I add the reverb back in. And even though we don't hear the reverb overwhelmingly, we might even want to back it down a little bit further because we're really just trying to feel the texture of it. We're not really trying to hear it as reverb per se. This is a coloring tool. So I'm going to take the reverb down even a little further. Great. Now, for the second part of what I'm going to do to create the contrast, to create the image that I'm going for, I want to have the snare that's hitting in this loop. To have its own reverb as well, this reverb I want to be a very narrow and long reverb. That's going to provide the front to back imaging as well as the side to side imaging that's going to make this very compelling. So what I've done here is I've sent this over to this channel which I've labeled as uh, loop to snare reverb and I've isolated the reverb from the uh, hi-hat and then I've put on an algorithmic reverb. And here we're going to hear a longer tail, and I've set the separation to be more mono, so it's going to be more in the center. In addition to that, because I want this to be like my elements like my clap and my bass are kind of more forward, and my kick and my hi-hat are the most forward, the snare is going to make for the back image. So I'm going to use less early reflections, more late reflections, and very little pre-delay, because that's going to create the impression of the snare being slightly further away, as opposed to doing it with more early reflections, less late reflections, and more pre-delay, which would make the snare feel closer. Now, it might be worth experimenting with both to see which one feels better, but I'm going to start with my initial idea and follow through on it. Here we go. I like the way that that feels. Let's experiment with it, see if we can try something different just to see what we get, but let's remember to go back to this setting if we don't get what we want. All right, I'm gonna turn the early reflections up, I'm gonna turn the late reflections down, and I'm gonna turn up the pre-delay a bit. Now the snare sits really like just behind the bass in terms of its front to back, and so the contrast is not as strong. I think that this is the weaker choice. I think that the instinct was right to begin with. Go with the less early reflections, more late reflections, and no pre-delay to have more of a front to back image on this. Now let's take off the reverbs, go back to where we started, turn the reverbs on, and see where we've gotten. Okay, with. To me, that's much more compelling. I think it still would need a little bit of development and a little bit of work to get it to really be just perfect from where it's at, but I think we're really on the right track, and to me, we've vastly improved the overall feel of the record. Now, let's jump over to the chorus and let's look at something entirely different. Once these big stab synths kind of come in, these, these huge melodic percussive synths come in, I think it would be really cool to have this expansive, washy, big room sound that we can build into the overall sound of things. I think because we want to customize exactly what we need and want, it's going to be better to have an algorithmic reverb. I sort of have an idea of what I'm already going for. I think that a less diffuse, more um, 
discrete sounding set of echoes with a pretty large size is going to be the way to go. I already have things sent over to this epic reverb, which I have a uh, reverb pulled up on. And the way that I've got it set, I have the early reflections pretty far up, the late reflections a little bit down. We're going to have a slightly closer sound with these synths. I might want to take the early reflections down a little bit. We'll find out in a second. Again, very little pre-delay to begin with because I don't know how forward or how far back I want these to be. I'm going to have to experiment, but I've got the diffusion turned pretty far to the left. I've got the size set right in the middle, and we're going to see how that feels in terms of its color. That's pretty good. I don't think we're far, far off. I think that we might want to go a little bit less on the early reflections, a little bit more on the late reflections, and I think that we maybe want to add a little bit of pre-delay here just to let the sound breathe a bit and to move it forward. Uh, I think size-wise, let's go a little bit larger. Uh, and diffusion wise, let's go maybe just a hair less diffuse and see how that feels. We might actually want to go in the other direction, but we're going to have to kind of feel it out. Okay, I think just from right away doing it, right there, that felt to me way better. It felt really big, it felt really colorful. I think that we've we've put it where it needs to be. So now the next thing that we might wanna do is kind of sculpt the low end a little bit. So for that, I'm going to pop in here. I already have the EQ set up. This is going to dry things out. It's gonna add some color to the top end. We might not need to do this, but let's let's see how it feels without that and then compare it to with. Those are pretty similar to me. The difference is that once I turn on that EQ, I feel like I get the drive of the kick back a little bit more. The kick becomes a little clearer. So I think that I like it without uh, this, with or with the low end cuts that I'm doing here. Um, but I'm gonna take down some of these top end boosts. I think that the reverb is already bright enough on its own. So really what I'm doing is I'm taking the sub range, everything that's under about 100 hertz out of this reverb, and I'm also carving out a little bit of like that sort of low mid range, the, the 200 to 300. I'm kind of just pulling that back a little, and I'm also kind of pulling ever so slightly a little bit of 700 hertz off. These are the things that make it feel muddy and roomy, and while I don't feel that it necessarily felt overwhelmingly so, I just don't wanted to get in the way of the bass and the kick. Now, this is obviously a lot of reverb. I'm going to take this down. I'm going to make it much subtler, but we're going to find that sweet spot where it gives all that color that we're looking for, and then we're going to listen to the verse transition into the chorus. I like that. Let's go from there. Let's let's see how that feels. We're really going to know if it's right if we go from the verse section into the chorus and just feel it out. Pretty close. I think we can maybe even do a little bit less reverb uh, on those synths. So just tighten it up ever so slightly. And uh, this fill that bridges the verse of the chorus definitely needs to come up. I won't be able to hear it right until that's pushed. All right, here we go. take these reverbs off. I'm going to play it, bring them on, play it, and we're going to wrap up. It 
kind of feel like it doesn't really totally get there in terms of the energy. Now let me bring the reverbs in. Now we have a world, we have contrast, we have front to back imaging, we have depth, we have new influence on the rhythm and texture. It's bringing really a whole lot to the mix and reverb is probably one of the most undersold and underutilized tools for getting a mix to really feel energized and alive. All right guys, till next time.